Hello everyone and welcome to On The Spot STEM. Today we'll be looking at five common errors for beginners to make when they're entering the competitive programming competitions. Now, before I begin, I'd like to add a few disclaimers. One, these are my opinions based on my personal experience. So if this doesn't align with what you remember being some of your common mistakes, please feel free to comment about it below. Next, this video is designed for beginners, so those of you advanced programmers probably will know many of these strategies already. But the intended goal for this video is to help those who are not familiar with the contest scene. And finally, we will not be going over things like syntax errors because those are usually caught by your compilers. And although they are very frustrating and very common errors to make, these are not the ones we will be going over in this video. Now, the first one that we will be going over is resetting variables. Now, when you're first starting off with programming competitions, it's really easy to just forget to reset a variable. You'll be going through, you'll create it at the beginning. Maybe it's a counter, maybe it's a visited array, but you'll say, oh, I'll just reset it later. And then you forget to come back to it. Now this error is really easy to fix, which is why I'm not explaining it as in depth, but just always make sure you're keeping track of which variables need to be reset. The second really common error is that integer division is not a float. And to really see this at play, we'll be using this following example problem. Given four integers, find the sum of the first two integers divided by the sum of the last two integers. Now let's take a look at this problem. As you can see, I've stored a, b, c, and d as integers, like the problem stated, and I'm simply printing out the value of a plus b divided by c plus d. So let's take a look at what that actually does for us. If my numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, it prints out 0. And we know that it should have printed out 3 divided by 7, which is approximately 0 0.42. So why didn't it do that? Well, it seems like it's still storing it as an integer. Because when integers are divided by each other, they, it floors the actual result, which is why it's giving us 0. So there is an easy way to get around this, and that is by forcing it to cast itself into a float. By adding a 1.0 times a plus b divided by c plus d, it says to Java, hey, we need a float, so that's what I want you to return back. So if we look at what that returns with the same exact test case of 1, 2, 3, and 4, we see that it gave us the value we wanted, which was 0 0.428. Another way we could have done this is instead of doing that, we could have saved a as a float from the very beginning. And when, when uh, Java has to see a float plus an integer, it casts everything to a float because that needs more precision. So let's take a look at what that would do with the test case. As you can see, we also got 0 0.42857, which is the answer we're looking for. So make sure you're always looking at your input and seeing if there's a case for a float to pop up. Sometimes it's hard, so you might want to come up with a few test cases that really help you find out if you need to cast things to floats. The next strategy that we will be looking at is edge case out of bounds. And what that means is whenever we're programming, sometimes there's always that one edge case that manages to throw us an error. So when we're compiling the program, we're running it against the sample test case, which is always nice, we won't see any errors. But when they run it against their own test cases, they'll throw out these few edge cases that manage to trip you up. But with a few if conditions, you should be able to get past this. So the example problem we'll be looking at to see this in action is given an index in an array of five integers, find the next element if one exists. And all that means is find the element that is to the right in the array. Now let's take a look at this problem. As you can see, we're given an array, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. We're given an index, which is going to be provided by the input. And then we're printing out array of n plus 1. 
And for a sample case might be the number two. And as you can see, two would be that element. So the one next to it would be three. And that is what we printed out. And it seems like our code is working. But upon further examination, if we look at the case where the number four is provided, we get an array out of bounds. Because even though four is an element, the next element, which is non-existent, cannot be printed because it doesn't exist. So we get an array out of bounds exception. So the easiest way to catch array out of bounds exceptions is to add if statements. For example, if in equals equals array dot length minus one, because if the index equals the last element, then we do not want to do anything and we can just return. So what this does is it allows us to run the program without creating an error. As you can see, no error happened. So it's important to know what the edge cases are. And especially when it comes to arrays, edge cases will be thrown at you a lot. And it, when you begin working with two dimensional arrays and you start moving on to like DFS, BFS, those kinds of algorithms, it becomes more important than ever to keep track of what might throw an error of out of bounds exception. So this is definitely an error that is very easy to fix as long as you have the edge case knowledge and you can come up with the scenarios that would cause your code not to work. The next common mistake we'll be looking at is integer overflow. For those of you who don't know, the maximum storage of an integer is two to the power of 31 minus one. What happens if you need to store something that's larger than that? Well, it cycles back to negative two to the 31 and it begins counting back up from there. So your answers will end up being very, very incorrect. So the sample problem we'll be looking at to see this in action is given an integer n less than 15, find 10 to the power of n. This next problem seems quite simple, but to really illustrate the point I'm trying to make, I'm not going to be using the math.pal function, which would make this quite easy. But the way I'm solving this problem is just taking a number one and multiplying it by 10 the amount of times we need to. That's an easy way to get a power function working. So if we look at what happens if we're given the number two, we print out 100. When we're given nine, we print out 10 to the power of nine. And when we're given 10, we print, that's not 10 to the power of 10. And it has to do with the fact that it's cycled around from two to the power of 31 minus one and it gave us an answer that is clearly not an integer. So the way we store things that are larger than an integer is by using a different data type called long. And the max value that a long can store is around 10 to the power of 18. So for any number 15 or less, as we can see, it will print out the right value. And this is, simply has to do with a long having more storage. And when you're in a competitive program competition, they will never throw values at you that exceed the value of long. They will, they always keep this into account and they will give you values that always work. But as the programmer, you need to figure out when you need to transition between using an integer and using a long, because that can make the difference between your code getting all the cases and your code getting none of the cases. And it's a one word fix. The final strategy we'll be looking at is probably one of the trickiest, and it is when your modulo is negative. So what that means is sometimes when you're trying to find a remainder, the remainder you get is negative. And most of the times we want positive remainders. So the problem we'll be looking at is given an integer n, find the remainder when n minus 10 is divided by 20. And for those of you familiar with uh, modulus arithmetic, and that translates to find n mod 20 minus 10 mod 20. And we'll be looking at what that means through code. Now for this problem, we could use the strategy of taking n minus 10 mod 20, but that wouldn't illustrate the point I'm trying to make. Because a lot of times in competitions, when they're asking you to use mods, 
it's because the number exceeds the value of what can normally be stored. I know times in programming competitions where I've had to store like 26 to the power of 100 mod 10 to the power of 9 plus 7. So the numbers get very large. And as a result, you have to start using some optimizations like I've shown in the comment here, where instead of doing n minus 10 mod 20, you take n mod 20 and then subtract 10 and then take it all mod 20. But you can get a few errors if you do this. And that is because what happens when you write the number 49? Well, if n is 49, then what we get is negative 1. And that's weird, but it has to do with the fact that 49 mod 20 is 9, and then 9 minus 10 is negative 1. And with Java, if you take negative 1 mod anything, it just will give you back the same negative number. And we know that this actually isn't the remainder. The remainder should be 39 mod 20, which is 19, but that's not what the program is giving. So we have to be clever. And the cleverest trick that I've seen and used many times in my programming experience is that instead of subtracting a number, you add whatever the modulus is and then subtract the number. Now let's try and see why this works. If we look at what we were doing before, then if we take the following value, which is n minus 10 plus 20 mod 20, then what it becomes is n mod 20 minus 10 mod 20 plus 20 mod 20. And this is equivalent because 20 mod 20 is zero to the same thing we had before. So this actually gives us the same result without ever having to go negative because positive values with positive values with modulus works really nicely whereas negative values do not thank you all for watching and please like subscribe and share this content with anyone else who might be interested or is thinking of getting involved in the competitive programming scene